Hello, and thanks for joining this presentation on the findings from a research project that we conducted with industry professionals regarding mastering in Dolby Vision and the quality or usability of the derived SDR Rec. 709 100 nit version. It's been a topic from content creators who have either not yet created a Dolby Vision Master or used an older version of the tools. Why studios should require a derived SDR version versus allowing the colorist the time to do a separate SDR grade. The goal of this project was to present measurable and meaningful data on the quality of the Dolby Vision derived SDR version, as well as some separate, independent, and organic results that other content creators have found. Before we dive into the data, let's first go over some background and what the questions that we sought answers for were and how we went about answering them. About six years ago, Dolby entered the HDR market with version 2.9 of the Dolby Vision mapping algorithm and the content creation tools. Studios began adopting Dolby Vision as the master HDR deliverable, and in some cases, using the derived SDR from that process. Being a new process, and for other reasons we'll discuss, there was some reluctance, however. Let's do a quick run-through of the process. The Dolby Vision workflow is recommended to start with creating the HDR master image first, typically done on a 1000, 2000, or 4000 nit professional HDR mastering monitor in PQ with a P3 or Rec 2020 color gamut. When the colorist is finished, the Dolby Vision metadata creation process begins by analyzing each of the individual shots. It's an automatic process and typically runs one-to-one -one for the program length for a UHD project. This generates three unique values per shot that describes the overall minimum, maximum, and average luminance. The colorist then enables the content mapping process that emulates the Dolby Vision process that occurs in the consumer TV or device. It maps the master HDR image down to SDR Rec. 709 at 100 nits, which is the furthest possible mapping point, and the colorist can then choose to further adjust the mapping to their desired look. For a one-hour show, this trim pass takes roughly half a day. By creating and approving these metadata anchor points in the color suite, when the image and metadata are delivered to the TV or device, they tone map correctly to the capabilities of that individual display. The feedback that we received was many felt that the SDR trim pass resulted in a very good SDR version and could be used as the SDR master deliverable, simplifying the process with time savings and a single deliverable to the studio, and maintaining great highlight detail and color from the HDR source. In most cases, the shot-by-shot -shot mapping was very good, but on the downside, offered little flexibility for creatives with only five usable artistic trim controls and a single tone curve. Outlier images were sometimes identified as not being able to be trimmed sufficiently and with the desired look. And so two years ago, Dolby released version 4.0, an improved mapping algorithm and comprehensive tool set designed to answer the issues seen in version 2.9. This improved the initial automatic mapping and extended the colorist controls up to nine primary controls and additionally 12 secondary controls for true six vector hue and saturation. Working in 4.0 also provides a backwards compatible Dolby Vision 2.9 version for older TVs and devices. This was seen as a great advancement in the process and both studios and creatives have since been adopting it and transitioning to it. The first question we set out to answer was, can the 4.0 analysis and artistic trim tools be sufficient enough for a colorist to match an existing SDR approved look from a traditional manual hand grade? And so we set out to test this ourselves and try to match the look of an existing SDR grade across a relatively wide variety of content in our own Dolby Burbank labs. The basic requirement for the clips we would use was, we had to have an approved HDR grade and a separate matching approved manual SDR grade. Several studio partners agreed to help us with the experiment, and we ended up with these eight titles. We decided on roughly 45 seconds of each show. Of the eight titles, 
One is an animation feature film. Six were traditional live action feature films made up of sci-fi, drama, etc. And one was from a dramatic, episodic TV show. Our talented Dolby colorist then painstakingly began to match each shot as closely as possible. We initially started using two separate PRM4200 matching monitors in SDR, but found it wasn't possible to get close enough using two separate monitors, and switched to a single monitor toggling back and forth on two inputs. We used a Sony X300, which, given its small size, could be positioned right in front of the colorist to easily toggle back and forth. Once we were satisfied with the match, we set out then to answer a second question, which was, can professionals in our industry, colorists, post-producers, studio execs, DPs, creatives, actually see a difference between the hand-graded SDR and Dolby Vision-derived SDR on a professional monitor, and to some meaningful extent, pick out which is which? We believed the variance between any two consumer monitors, even calibrated, would not be a high enough bar for this test, even if it was more realistic on how the end consumer would experience these SDR versions. Our hypothesis for the experiment was, if you were just randomly guessing or answering the same monitor every time, with a large enough group, you should see a 50% average score. So statistically, we would want to see something better in the 65 to 80% range, say, to see a significant measurable response indicating that people can actually pick out the original SDR grade, and therefore it was preferred or largely better. We felt it would also be useful data if the person taking the test would have an option to say, I'm not sure, I'm just guessing. We then constructed the test in DaVinci Resolve, since we were using that system as our roadshow demo rig, and it supported dual eye mode, feeding the two separate videos in sync to two calibrated Sony BVM X300 monitors set to SDR Rec 709 100 nit. They were labeled monitor A and monitor B. We also used bias lighting and neutral gray back panels in a darkened room. The eight finished rendered clips were organized to switch in the same pre-programmed order for every participant. We then built the questions for the survey that could be loaded in a browser on mobile phones or tablets and had the participants enter their answers. The questions were formatted as, for clip one, Ray Donovan, which monitor is showing the original traditionally graded SDR? The participants could answer monitor A, monitor B, or I'm not sure. To make the test less daunting, we employed two helpful aids for our viewers. First, we chose to pause twice during the first two clips and move the content on monitor A to monitor B. We would toggle back and forth to point out that there is a difference that is easier seen as toggling on a single stimulus. Secondly, we chose a slower than normal frame rate playback of 18 frames per second as opposed to the correct 24 frames per second, allowing more time for the eye to focus in on certain areas of the image and compare on the other monitor. We then took our roadshow across the globe with several teams and over the course of four months traveled to these nine cities. We had 560 unique individuals complete the test. These were invite-only private demos for industry professionals. As a side note, all partially completed tests were ignored. Typically, there were five to eight people in the room together, and the makeup, as mentioned earlier, was primarily colorists, engineers, post-producers, studio execs, studio mastering teams, DPs, directors, and creatives. We purposely did not ask the people to identify their role or enter their name with the test so that there wouldn't be any intimidation and they could freely answer. Also, the data could not be sifted or singled out later. And here are the results of the test. Looking at the percentage of correct answers, we see a fairly traditional looking bell curve distribution with the biggest weighting at 145 people scoring 50% correct. The average correct score in identifying the traditional SDR grade was 45%, which indicated that people were generally doing about as good as if they were guessing. This, however, was far below our hypothesis threshold of 65% or higher, suggesting that people could not tell the difference to any meaningful extent. 
Further to that point, only three people, less than 1%, were able to identify all eight clips correctly. In fact, one colorist who correctly identified all of the clips looked genuinely shocked. On the flip side, 12 people, roughly 2%, scored a perfect 0%, basically inverting what they thought was the traditional SDR grade for the Dolby Vision derived grade. Interestingly, 8.6% of all answers recorded were, I'm not sure. Anecdotally, the overwhelming feedback in the room was, wow, this was really hard and I wasn't sure. Before we revealed each person's score on their iPad, we asked them to pause for a few more minutes to show them the final piece of the demo and then answer two more questions about the overall experience. More on that in a minute. The final portion of the event focused on other benefits of using Dolby Vision 4.0 to create a derived SDR. In this case, we presented several examples where filmmakers had an existing traditional SDR grade first and then later created a Dolby Vision HDR version of their film or show and did the SDR trim pass merely to create metadata. Organically, they perceived a visible improvement in the SDR image typically in the shadow or highlight detail, as well as color vibrancy in the limited space of SDR Rec. 709. These filmmakers were happy to share their stories and allowed us to present a side-by-side -side comparison of their manual SDR grade and the derived Dolby Vision SDR version. The first example is from a different clip of the same episode from the hit TV series Ray Donovan that we had shown earlier in the survey. Both the DP and colorist were asked to do some Dolby Vision 4.0 testing on an episode that had aired already in SDR, and they had never done the Dolby Vision process before. They were thrilled with how their footage translated to Dolby Vision HDR, but were shocked that the Dolby Vision derived SDR was able to solve problems that they were unable to fix in the traditional hand graded SDR that went to air. For instance, they had spent hours trying to get this shot of the cityscape and sunset to look correct with both keys and power windows. You can see that the Dolby Vision derived version is able to capture the color gradient and more detail in the buildings and headlights. Another troublesome shot they encountered is actually a story point that was problematic. The actress walking across the street is running for mayor and the taxicab going in front of her has a sign that carries her image and name, not easily discernible in the original SDR. It's more clipped and blurred. But in the Dolby derived version, you can actually make out the name and the image. Because of these dramatic improvements, they ultimately asked the studio to replace several of the shots on the streaming SDR version. The next example shots are from filmmaker Dean Devlin of Electric Entertainment. He's the creator of Independence Day, Stargate, and Geostorm, to name a few. He also does episodic television, and this is from a show called The Outpost, which airs on the CW network. They contacted us and were curious about a workflow improvement and a better SDR version. So we arranged for a demo, having them bring both their original SDR graded version and their camera raw source files. We spent a short time grading the clips in HDR, and then running the Dolby Vision process. You'll notice in the resulting images that there is much more detail and better color in the Dolby derived SDR. They were so motivated and curious, they went back and tried to achieve it in the traditional SDR method and found they couldn't manage. While they didn't have a current demand for one of their shows to be created in HDR or Dolby Vision, they have since switched over to doing all the shows in the Dolby Vision workflow, including the current season that's airing now of Outpost. Here's what he said at the end of the investigation. As spectacular as HDR is, we basically ignored it because it was cost prohibitive for us to color time it as well as doing a second version in SDR. With the Dolby Vision tools and workflow, however, we find we can spend our energy and money on creating the best version possible and only have to do the process once. We found it even gives us a better SDR than we could create in the traditional way. We are hooked. If you are interested in more independent research on this topic, there's a great article from independent filmmakers, bloggers, and a post facility in Utah called Mystery Box, 
where they explore many ways of creating an HDR and SDR version, and ultimately how to get the best possible SDR version. Here's a quick excerpt from their extensive testing. If you are an independent content producer, creating a Dolby Vision Pass of your film is worth it, even if you can't do anything more with it right now than to generate the best SDR version for distribution because that version will be the best SDR you can get. And so our roadshow demo ended, and after this final section, the attendees were asked to answer two final questions on their iPad before their score was revealed to them. Was the SDR survey interesting and helpful to you on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most useful? And the second question, how worthwhile and helpful was this event for you on a scale of 1 to 10? People were allowed to skip these questions, but most answered. Of those that did, the average score was an 8.80 and an 8.88 out of 10, respectively. The overwhelming feedback was that the survey and its results helped people better understand the possibilities of the Dolby Vision workflow and tools to create the best possible looking SDR version, as well as a great Dolby Vision HDR experience. It helped take bias, conjecture, and opinion out of the equation and test in a very close approximation of a professional environment. And the secondary real-world organic discoveries of filmmakers comparing an existing SDR grade side-by-side -side with a derived SDR was also very helpful. Ultimately, we hope that this data was helpful to you and if you'd like more information about the Dolby Vision tools and workflow to conduct your own testing, please contact us. We'd love to hear from you, and thank you.